coffee vibe. No parking. Woo! switching these little guys out to these for the winter so we don't have to fill as often I guess double because mm -hmm. that's 220s these are 240s so our furnace runs off of propane and so does our stove and oven and during peak winter season <laughs> during peak winter seasons these things both of them will only last like three or four days. She's got total fear of missing out. <laughs> she will cry every time, even though she's out here with us, literally like three feet away. She wants to be in it. Kentucky Railway Museum. The Kentucky Railway. Rail? Rail? Railway. Railway. Okay, really so hard railway. times. <laughs> New Haven, Kentucky. Coming at ya. fortunate enough to have gone to the Kentucky Railway Museum on a day that they were relatively slow. This meant we had an extra personal experience since it was just Allie, myself, and one tour guide. And it's for that reason that I would highly recommend going in the off-season. Having that one-on-one -on -one touch with a tour guide really just gave the full richness of the tour and made it more enjoyable than it ever could have been during peak season. This is a little bounce around, knock around, whatever car. It's called a Cardinal. And it ran basically between Frankfurt and Lexington or Frankfurt and a couple of other places. Back before your um, pickup truck or camper. Mm -hmm. um, seating capacity, there is a workroom here in the front for baggage, mail, okay. packages, whatever. A little gasoline powered engine. Okay. You remember the kid's story, the little engine that could? Yes. <laughs> this it was it. It didn't go far, it didn't go fast, but it, but it went. went. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. This was another one of those great benefits to going on a slow day. 
This whole warehouse filled with trains that are typically closed off to the public during peak season, our tour guide allowed us to come into, showed us around, and gave us history about each one personally. In addition to seeing the warehouse where many trains are having remodels and repairs done, our guide allowed us to go in and sit in an operational locomotive to see where the action happens. Inside the main building of the museum, the owner and operator has taken so much time to build this custom model train set where you could spend hours observing all the little intricate details that he's put into it. The staff really made us feel like VIPs on this train ride. Along with the conductor, our tour guide from the day before was also staffed on board to help with the passengers. They remembered us and were so intentional with us, which just made the train ride that much more enjoyable. Once the railroad lived through the Civil War, some of the first freight were for the main distilleries that located along this railroad. Thanks to the high quality wheat, oats, rye, barley, and corn the farmers were growing, and the limestone water prevalent in this part of the state of Kentucky, there were 14 distilleries between Lebanon and Boston, all of them making good old distilled Kentucky bourbon whiskey. There are only two still operating this afternoon. One's the Jim Beam plant just beyond where we stop at Boston. The other is the old Burke Springs facility at Loretta which some of you may more familiarly recognize for the name of Maker's Mark. It makes me want to go into the Jim Beam and the Maker's Mark even more now that we like, are getting a piece of the history of the tracks, because these tracks directly serve both of those distilleries, and those are the only two surviving distilleries from when tra this track was originally laid. That's, I didn't realize that. Like the, the history behind those two and why they're so big now because they're so old. Like they've got a lot of history. Right. Like they earned that name. Mm -hmm.
like to get the history and the, the walk around the train and get to look at it. You like the you get some some uh, facts and stuff on the train ride itself, but it gives you so much more depth if you do the Kentucky Railway Museum, like the, the guided tour first. So if you're if you're gonna do it, you, if you do it the same day, do it all the same day because you really can kind of put it all together. But we did it in two separate days, which I, I enjoyed. 